At the heart of every story lies a decision, a twist of fate that changes everything. I used to believe in the fairy tales of love, trust, and shared dreams. But when betrayal hit close to home, it reshaped my world in ways I could never have imagined. This is a tale of corporate challenges, hidden vendettas, and personal revelations. Dive into a journey that took me from the comforting arms of love to the cold clutches of revenge and, surprisingly, back to the warm embrace of understanding and redemption. If you've ever been caught in the crossfire of love and ambition, this story might just resonate with you. Join me as I navigate the intricate web of emotions, decisions, and consequences that fate spun for me. My name is Hannah, and this is my story. The morning the betrayal came to light started innocuously enough. It was a Wednesday, the middle of a work week, and my morning coffee had just finished brewing. But with the sound of my phone buzzing on the kitchen counter, my life was about to take a dark, unexpected turn. An anonymous email hit my inbox, and the contents shook my world to its core. Hey there, it began. You don't know me, but I thought you should know about your husband's little secret venture. Check the attachments. Curiosity peaked. My fingers trembled as I clicked open the attached documents. What unfolded before my eyes was evidence of my husband, Richard, secretly funneling company funds into his private account. Funds from the company I had dedicated the past decade of my life to. I felt like I was free-falling. A mix of anger, pain, and confusion bubbled up inside me. How could he do this? I whispered to myself. After everything we built together? It didn't take long for the scandal to explode. Word got out, and the board members were swift in their actions. By the end of the week, I was let go the fall woman for a betrayal I had no part in. Richard disappeared, leaving me to deal with the fallout. Friends who I thought were genuine began to distance themselves. The life I had built was crumbling around me. Months later, after drowning in depression, I decided to rebuild, not for Richard, not for my old life, but for myself. I started at a new company, Fresh Start Tech, and things began looking up, Every night, as I went to bed, I'd tell myself, tomorrow will be better, tomorrow will be brighter. And then, as if by some twisted joke, he resurfaced. Richard, after laying low for months, had the audacity to apply for a position at my new company. And here's the kicker, he didn't know I worked there. As I sat at my desk, reading his application that had landed in my inbox due to a system error, a wicked idea began to form. Karma is about to make a U-turn, I said to myself with a smirk. Pulling up the email, I began typing, Dear Richard. And just like that, my plan was set into motion. What followed was a series of events that I can only describe as fate's sweetest revenge. I leaned back in my chair, formulating my thoughts. The office was quiet, save for the hum of the air conditioning. The dim lighting from my desk lamp illuminated Richard's resume, making me think of all the possibilities. Dear Richard, I began, thank you for applying to Fresh Start Tech. We're intrigued by your application. We would like to schedule an interview. How does tomorrow sound? I hesitated before hitting send. Is this really what I want? I asked myself, feeling a pang of guilt. But then, images of my past, losing my job, my reputation, and everything I had worked so hard for, flashed before me. I clicked send before I could second-guess myself any further. The reply came sooner than I expected. Tomorrow sounds great, Richard responded. I'm looking forward to it. His signature at the end, with that familiar pompous flair, reignited my determination. I pulled Jane, the HR head, into my office. You remember Richard, right? I began, explaining the whole fiasco and my plan to her. Jane, a fierce protector of her employees and a woman scorned once too often herself, was immediately on board. Let's make him squirm, she said with a wicked grin. 
The day of the interview, I felt an odd mix of excitement and anxiety. My heart raced as I took my position behind the one-way mirror of the observation room, adjacent to the interview area. Jane was to lead the interview, but I would be watching his every move, every reaction. Richard walked in, looking as confident as ever. The arrogance in his stride was just as I remembered. Jane began the interview in the most ordinary way, asking about his experience, why he wanted to join Fresh Start, the usual stuff. But then, the questions started becoming more personal. How would you handle betrayal from someone you trust? She asked, eyeing him intently. Richard shifted uncomfortably, clearing his throat. Uh, I believe trust is the foundation of any relationship, be it professional or personal, he stuttered, clearly caught off guard. Jane continued, Have you ever faced a situation where your integrity was questioned? His face flushed, beads of sweat forming on his brow. I suppressed a smirk, taking a sip of my coffee. The show had just begun. He struggled through the rest of the questions, the atmosphere thick with tension. And then, just when he thought it was over, Jane delivered the final blow. We've recently hired someone you might know, she said nonchalantly, sliding a photo across the table. A photo of me, taken during a recent office party. I could almost feel the blood drain from Richard's face. I... I didn't know she worked here, he murmured his voice barely above a whisper. Jane leaned in, her face inches from his. Oh, didn't you? Well, she's doing great, by the way, thriving even. Funny how life turns out, huh? The interview ended shortly after. Richard practically sprinted out of the room, his dreams of a cushy job at Fresh Start Tech shattered. As the door closed behind him, Jane walked into the observation room, her face beaming. That felt good she said, high-fiving me. I smiled, taking a deep breath. It's a start, I replied, but I've got a feeling this is just the beginning. Word quickly spread around the office about Richard's disastrous interview. My colleagues were supportive, their whispers of encouragement mingling with disdain for Richard's audacity. For once, office gossip was on my side. A week later, a colleague named Marcus popped his head into my office. Heard you're a coding genius, he started. I raised an eyebrow in surprise. I did know coding, but genius might have been stretching it. There's an anonymous blog going around about Fresh Start's successes and failures. Some posts have sensitive information that only someone internal would know. My heart sank. It couldn't be. Richard wouldn't be so brazen, would he? Show me, I demanded. Marcus handed over his tablet, and the anonymous blog stared back at me. Sure enough, there were posts suggesting inside knowledge. One post even hinted at my past, with just enough vagueness to stoke curiosity without outright stating facts. I thought back to Richard's technical prowess. He wasn't just good, he was excellent. Tracing him would be a challenge. I need to figure out who's behind this, I said to myself, my determination rekindling. Over the next few days, I dove deep into the virtual world, dusting off old coding skills and seeking help from hacker forums. I was up against a mastermind, but two could play that game. Late one night, as I pored over lines of code and server logs, a breakthrough came. An IP address, hidden behind layers of encryption, pointed to a familiar location. Richard's old office space, which he had converted into a makeshift apartment post our fallout. Now, with evidence in hand, I needed a plan. I called Jane and Marcus, and together, we hatched a strategy. Using the blog as bait, we would create a fake company scandal, something so juicy Richard wouldn't be able to resist posting. Over the next few days, fabricated emails about a potential merger, one that would jeopardize hundreds of jobs, were strategically leaked where Richard could find them. As expected, the story was up on his blog within hours. The trap was set. 
As the story exploded online, our fictional narrative played out perfectly. Employees, in on the ruse, expressed faux outrage on social media, amplifying the chatter. Every local news outlet was talking about the upcoming merger at Fresh Start Tech. By now, Richard was probably reveling in his perceived success, believing he had inflicted maximal damage. But our team was only getting started. Jane used her media contacts to hint that the whistleblower might be a disgruntled ex-employee with a personal vendetta. The focus slowly shifted from the scandal to the mysterious blogger. Then, Marcus approached me with a wild idea. What if we can tie him up financially too? He mused. I was intrigued. Marcus explained that with Richard's technical expertise, he had to be using a VPN and other premium tools to keep his activities covered. Tools that weren't free. With Marcus's knowledge in cyber forensics, we could trace back his digital payments. The task was daunting, but the duo of Marcus and myself was relentless. Days turned into nights as we scoured the depths of the internet, chasing down the breadcrumbs Richard had unwittingly left behind. One afternoon, amidst a pile of payment gateways and masked transactions, a clue emerged. A single payment to a premium VPN service, linked to an account under a pseudonym King Richard used in college. Jackpot. But how would tying him to a VPN payment make a difference? Here's the twist. Using VPNs for malicious activities violated the terms of service of most providers. If we could prove Richard's misdeeds and report them, not only would he lose his cover, but he would also face hefty fines. Gathering all our evidence, we approached the VPN provider. To our delight, they were extremely cooperative, condemning any misuse of their services. Within days, Richard's service was terminated and a significant fine was levied on him. We didn't stop there. We also sent all our findings to other tools and services he had used, ensuring a domino effect of penalties and account closures. Meanwhile, the fake company scandal had served its purpose. The media had grown suspicious, and when no concrete proof of the merger surfaced, they realized they'd been played. Articles began popping up, discrediting the mysterious blogger and his dubious sources. Feeling the heat, Richard finally posted a retraction on his blow, apologizing for spreading misinformation. However, the damage to his credibility was done. His reputation as a reliable source was in tatters. One evening, as I relaxed out in my living room, a soft chime alerted me to a new email. The sender, Richard, the content, an apology. He wrote about his regret, his realization of the harm he'd caused, and his desire to make amends. I sat there for a long while, staring at the sincere words on the screen. Part of me wanted to gloat, to revel in the satisfaction of my revenge. But another part, a part I had tried to suppress, remembered the love we once shared. Torn between past emotions and the pain of betrayal, I finally typed a short response. Apology noted. Fresh Start Tech began to flourish in the weeks that followed. Our fake scandal not only brought us into the limelight, but inadvertently acted as free publicity. Applications poured in, sales skyrocketed, and morale around the office was at an all-time high. Yet amidst the booming success, I couldn't help but feel a void, an emptiness that no amount of professional triumph could fill. After one particularly draining day, I found myself driving aimlessly through the city, lost in thought. The bright city lights, the buzz of traffic, and the distant hum of nightlife created a mesmerizing atmosphere. As I drove, my car seemed to have a mind of its own, guiding me to a familiar location, the coffee shop where Richard and I first met. The place held so many memories, from nervous first date jitters to late night conversations, planning our future together. Walking in felt like stepping into a time capsule the same vintage decor, the faint aroma of freshly brewed coffee, and a soft jazz number playing in the background transported me to a happier time. I found a secluded booth at the back and ordered our usual two cappuccinos with a hint of cinnamon. As I sipped my drink, 
The past played before my eyes. I remembered the good times, the dreams we built, and the life we once envisioned. But the lingering taste of betrayal overshadowed all the sweet memories. Lost in thought, I almost didn't notice him. Richard, sitting a few booths away, his face buried in a book. Our eyes met, and for a moment, time seemed to stand still. No words were exchanged, but a million emotions flitted across both our faces. Taking a deep breath, I walked over. Mind if I join you? I asked hesitantly. He looked up, surprise evident in his eyes, but he nodded. The conversation that followed was a roller coaster. We laughed, cried, reminisced, and confronted our demons. Richard explained his spiral into deceit, driven by a misguided desire to protect our future. He spoke of his guilt, his nights haunted by remorse, and the realization that he had destroyed the very thing he aimed to safeguard. I listened, my heart warring between anger and empathy. Why come back? Why apply to fresh start? I finally asked. He sighed. It was a desperate attempt to correct my mistakes, to be close to you again. But I realize now that some bridges, once burned, can't be rebuilt. The hours flew by, and as dawn approached, a new understanding formed between us. We may not have a future together, but we could find closure and move on with our lives. Before parting ways, Richard handed me an envelope. I sold some assets, he began. This is to cover the funds I misused. It's not much, but it's a start. Opening the envelope, I found a check and a letter detailing his plan to repay every single cent he had taken, even if it took him a lifetime. As I walked away from the coffee shop, the weight on my shoulders felt lighter. The chapter with Richard might be closed, but a new chapter was waiting to be written. Life at Fresh Start Tech progressed at a rapid pace. My revenge plot and the emotional rendezvous at the coffee shop seemed like distant memories. Yet, subtle changes became evident in the way I approached work and relationships. Jane noticed first. You've changed, she observed one day. Not in a bad way, just different. She was right. The ordeal with Richard had inadvertently taught me the value of forgiveness and the impermanence of grudges. As weeks turned to months, an exciting project landed on our table. Fresh Start Tech had been approached by a nonprofit to develop a software solution for underprivileged children to gain access to quality education. The stakes were high, but so was the potential impact. I threw myself into the project, channeling all my energy and focus. My personal experiences had taught me the importance of second chances, and I was determined to provide one to these children. One evening, while brainstorming ideas with the team, Marcus made a surprising suggestion. Why not involve Richard? He has the skill set we need. I was taken aback. Trusting Richard professionally after everything felt risky. But then, the memory of our conversation at the coffee shop and his genuine remorse surfaced. The next day, I found myself dialing Richard's number, an action I hadn't anticipated. His voice on the other end sounded surprised but hopeful. Explaining the project, I offered him a consulting role. He accepted without hesitation. Thank you, he murmured, the gratitude evident in his tone. The project was a whirlwind. Days were filled with coding marathons, brainstorming sessions, and endless cups of coffee. Richard, true to form, was a genius. His expertise was invaluable, and it became clear that his involvement was crucial for the project's success. As the software took shape, something unexpected happened. The walls between Richard and me, constructed from pain and mistrust, began to crumble. We weren't returning to old romantic patterns, but a new, stronger bond of friendship and mutual respect emerged. The day our software launched, was one of profound triumph. Thousands of children would benefit from it, and Fresh Start Tech received accolades for its philanthropic venture. At the launch party, Richard approached me, a bottle of our favorite champagne in hand. 
to new beginnings, he toasted. I nodded, clinking my glass against his, and to second chances. The journey had been long and tumultuous, from love to betrayal, revenge to forgiveness, and estrangement to camaraderie. But as I stood there amidst the celebration, I realized something crucial. Life is never a straight path. It's a series of twists, turns, and reroutes, but ultimately it leads us exactly where we're meant to be.